Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week I'm going to be doing a little bit of a personal project and this idea kind of came out of a conversation that I was having with the fine folks at Handheld Legend. So this is a website I definitely recommend you take a look at if you haven't been there already. I've been using their products for years, um, even before I had a YouTube channel when I was just learning how to do console modding. and. They're an absolutely outstanding resource when it comes to handheld mods. They have all sorts of tools and accessories, and uh, and they, they have even tutorials and guides for modding Game Boys, Game Boy Colors, GBA, and also all of the other handhelds like uh, the Game Gear or the Neo Geo Pocket Color, you name it. So, yeah, I was talking to them, and, you know, they were basically like, you know, what would be the handheld console of your dreams? And uh, I thought about it for a little bit, and for me, that would really be the GBA, the original form factor of the GBA. I really love uh, the GBA for a bunch of reasons. It's really comfortable in the hand. It's got nice buttons. They're not, like, cramped and compact like the SP. It's got a headphone jack, which also the SP is lacking. <laughs> and it's got all that backwards compatibility with the entire Game Boy library. So you can you can play, you know, thousands of games on it. Um, but, you know, it has tons of drawbacks, like the original unmodified GBA. Like the, the sound quality isn't so great. Uh, the, the, the volume of the speaker is rather limited. And of course, let's not forget the screen, which isn't even backlit. So there's plenty you can do to make a GBA better. So I thought about it some more, and for me, not only that, I really wanted I wanted something that kind of was a throwback to the original Dot Matrix Game Boy, which you have right here. This is actually my childhood Game Boy. This is what got me in love with handheld gaming. And so I wanted something with that kind of aesthetic, but with all of the modern sensibilities that I was describing earlier. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take this stock GBA and transform it into the GBA of my dreams uh, by installing all of these mods and transplanting it into this beautiful... Uh, GBA Classic Edition kind of shell. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of mods here that I'm going to install on this GBA, and rather than installing them all at once and then testing the final result, I'm going to do it in pieces, and this is really important because if something goes wrong, then I can stop and test and figure out what happened, rather than doing everything at once and hoping for the best, which is definitely not the way to do any kind of complex compound set of mods. So, First thing we're going to do is we're going to install this D-Hum and D-Hiss uh, add-on and this Clean Amp Pro. So both of these mods are uh, designed to address the limitations of sound on the GBA. So for those of you who have one, you'll know that the speaker isn't that loud and there's also a little bit of like audio hiss and interference. And so this helps to really clean it up and, and then this is going to increase the... Um, the range of sound that we have uh, from the from the speaker. I'm also going to take a brand new speaker and install it as well. So first order of business here is going to be taking this thing apart. And so that's very easy. You just need a tri-wing screwdriver and a Phillips. These are simple to you know find. You can find them all over the place. So <clears throat> there are seven screws on the outside and uh, most of them are tri-wing. There's only one on the inside that is uh, that is Phillips and it's located right here in the battery compartment. And then once you open up the GBA, you've got three screws. They're notated with a circle here on the silk screen. It's either two or three. So there's always one here. And then sometimes there's two, sometimes there's one. Um, so you just have to take that out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lift these little bales. These are the locking mechanisms for the, for the screen. So you can lift them up with your fingernail or with a tool. And then from there, it just flips and you can pull it out. And you can see that I've got a pretty nice clean GBA here. This one's in really good condition. I tested it in advance and I made sure it worked. And that's another really important thing to consider when you're doing mods. Make sure that you've got a nice confirmed working console before you commit all this time and energy into doing the work. Okay, so I'm gonna start by removing the speaker and then we're gonna go ahead and start installing some of these things. All right, so the first thing we're gonna install is the D-Hum and D-Hiss kit. So this will help filter the sound and make it sound a lot cleaner. Um, and I believe this is true regardless of whether you add an amplifier or not, um, whether you're using the default sound or, or not. So where we're going to solder is to three points. There's these three capacitors right here we solder to. There's also the ground on the battery terminal. And then finally, the positive lead of this electrolytic capacitor right here. So I do find that it's helpful to pre-tin uh, this point here and this point just to make it easier to connect. It's not as necessary for these three ceramic capacitors over here. All right, so let's get to it.
Okay, so we've got the D-Hum and D-Hiss PCB installed, and it really wasn't that big of a deal. It's just these five points right here. Uh, the important thing is just to use flux and just be careful with your iron. So mm, some of you might have noticed that I actually was not that careful, and I accidentally desoldered this ceramic capacitor right here, and it's because the tip of my iron touched both parts and it just came loose. It was not a big deal though because I was able to grab it with the tweezers, hold it back into place, and solder it into position, so everything is good. But just keep that in mind that when you're doing these three, just make sure that you're cautious with your soldering iron so you don't accidentally desolder these components. All right, so now we're gonna turn our attention to the front of the Game Boy motherboard and we're going to install the CleanAmp Pro. So this is the amplifier and it goes right here in place like this. So this one's really not that difficult to install either. You just solder it into position on all of these various points. And the speaker is going to go here on, on these two pads. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so I finished up the audio mods and reassembled it back into its original shell. So what I have here is a comparison between a stock unmodified GBA and the one that we've modified for better sound. So let's go ahead and test Metroid Zero Mission. We're both in the same general spot, so we have the same kind of music. So let me show you first what the original GBA sounds like at maximum volume. <laughs> So, okay, it sounds good, but it's not really that loud, and if you put headphones on, you can pick up some kind of interference. So, you know, it's, it's okay, but we can definitely do a lot better. So now let's have a listen to the modified GBA right here. So yeah, it's a lot louder, and the sound is really crisp, um, it sounds, you know, even better on the headphones, so it's definitely a nice modification, it gives you a lot more range with your sound, so I highly recommend it. Um, okay, so all of the sound modifications were successful, so now we're going to move on to improving the video. As you guys can see from here, the original display is pretty terrible, you really need direct light, it's actually really hard to film. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this modern IPS display and we're going to install it instead. We're also going to install um, three wires that will allow us to adjust brightness with a button combination. Okay, so let's get started with that. Okay, so we've got our IPS screen right here, and as you guys can see, I have switched to having gloves on, and that's so that I don't accidentally touch the screen and put any smudges or fingerprints on it. <clears throat> Alright, so first thing we're going to do is uh, we're, I already attached the, the screen's controller board to it and it's just a little socket that you push it into and I use a piece of double-sided tape to put these two together so they're not going to be <clears throat> moving around and you can kind of functionally think of them as a single unit. So first thing I normally do is I actually remove these little touch pads. I prefer using a button combination instead of touching these to change things like brightness and contrast or whatever. So I... Um, I always just desolder these, which is rather simple. And so now you can see on the PCB that there are three pads. One is for L, R, and select. So I'm gonna take three wires that are provided with the kit and we're going to solder those to these pads. <clears throat> okay, so there we go, that's all set. Um, I also have a adapter that goes into here and this is to connect the new screen to the GBA motherboard. So there's two different types. One is for a 40 pin GBA, the other is for a 32 pin GBA. The one I happen to have here is 40 pin, so that's what I'm gonna use. And you just have to lift this carefully up. There we go. <clears throat> 
this piece is going to slide in like so. And we're just going to push it down. Okay, so now that the screen is ready, we're going to go ahead and start working on the new shell here. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this uh, glass screen protector and install it. And it's a little tricky to do this with gloves, but I'll do my best. Okay, and I'm going to leave this outer plastic protector on until the very end. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, so now I'm going to move, remove the screen protection here from the IPS screen. And what's really nice about these shells from Handheld Legend is that they're already pre-cut so that an IPS screen can fit perfectly. There's no issues with... Um, trimming or anything like that that you use with stock shells. It also means that if you ever wanted to put this thing back into its original shell, it's not a big deal because it hasn't been modified in any way. So <clears throat> it comes with these plexiglass spacers that help lock everything into place. There's one for the side here. There's also one for the bottom. Um, this one doesn't really fit on a IPS uh, ready shell like this. So what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of Kapton tape and and put it down here just to keep the screen from maybe moving downward by accident as a result of, you know, just jostling the GBA. Um, you can also use maybe like a dab of hot glue <clears throat> just on the corner here just to keep it from moving. Uh, I'm also going to put a little bit of tape over here as well and this is just to prevent this guy from moving. All right, so I've got the GBA partially assembled now. I've got the button pads and the original, you know, parts that I took off of that GBA on here. I might change these out at some point as well, but this time I decided just to leave them alone. So these are the original membranes and buttons. <clears throat> they, they felt pretty good. They were clean. They worked. So I, I just felt like keeping those. Um, so now what we've got to do is solder three wires to the GBA. One of them is to the front of the GBA, and it's right over here, this spot, which is called TP2 or test point two. This allows you access to the select button. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one wire here and solder it to that position. Okay, <clears throat> so now that that's connected, the other two are for the triggers and they're gonna be on the opposite side of the board. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these three wires and we're gonna route them carefully so that they go over here where the screen flex cable goes. Okay, so now that everything's screwed in place, it's a lot easier to deal with the GBA because everything's, you know, fixed. It's not going to move around anymore. <clears throat> so, so now we're going to go ahead and attach the screen. So we just have to lift up these bales, which they are already for me. And then you can use like a set of tweezers or your hands and get it to go in with the gold contacts facing up like this. Okay, so the last little bit of soldering we've got to do is to the L and R buttons. So we're going to take both of these wires and we're going to solder them to this point and this point respectively on the two buttons. Um, it's actually arbitrary. If you turn, it turns out you switch them, it really doesn't matter. Their function is to either increase or decrease the brightness. So if you flip them around, it's still going to work. It's just that the opposite button will be increasing then and the other one will be decreasing. So what I'm going to do is just route these very carefully so that they don't get in the way of anything, including the screw posts. So that's probably the most difficult part about doing this modification is these three wires and just making sure they don't get gummed up or caught in something that they're not supposed to be, you know, caught up in. Uh, but yeah, I do find as long as you're careful with them and you have them run up where the screen is, you should be safe. All right, so let's finish this up. All right, so now everything is reassembled and I'm just gonna do a very quick test and we're gonna see if everything's good with the screen and with the button combos. So let's peel that back. Looks gorgeous, I absolutely love this look. And now it's powered on. Man, that just looks great. <laughs> That's just beautiful. All right, so let's try the buttons.
And yes, I can change the brightness, make it brighter or dimmer. So that is excellent. So we are just about done. The final thing we're gonna be installing is a solution so that we don't have to use AA batteries anymore. And so this is also a really nice um, product. It's called the Clean Juice GBA, and it's a drop-in replacement. So I don't have to actually do anything. I don't have to change any components or anything like that. All I have to do is attach this lithium ion battery to uh, the charger, connect them up together, and plug it in. So let's get that done. And then just to cap it off, we have a battery uh, compartment with an opening here for the USB-C charging port. Wow, that just looks fantastic. All right, so uh, we are all set. Let me go ahead and pop in a game and we can take a look. All right, guys, so we're back and I have that comparison again with this stock GBA and this fully modded GBA console of my dreams. And so you can really see it's a huge, huge difference. I really had to mess around with the lighting just so that you could even see the original screen. I mean, it's really tough. It doesn't help that this particular unit is a little bit beat up and old. I mean, I got this from an auction in Japan. You can see it's kind of seen better days, but this is a stock screen and this is the experience you get unless you're blasting it with direct sunlight. Um, I also reduced the volume down a little bit here. So, I mean, yeah, you, you can see it's pretty damn loud if I want it to be with this with this GBA. So yeah, I am absolutely thrilled with the results and I really can't thank Handheld Legend enough for what they did and getting me all of these components so that I could build this thing. I'm gonna play the hell out of it. I travel a lot for my job, for my day job anyway, so uh, this thing is gonna be coming along with me. All right guys, so that's it for this week's video. If you like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out like this every Friday. And then of course, if you have a console that you want repaired or modified, you can always reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.